in this episode we're going to learn how to do through hole component soldering and we're going to build up a little circuit board that reacts to sound. Uh, so let's get to it. So the best way to learn how to solder is simply by doing. So we have a sound to light unit kit I've just brought. And it basically comes with a PCB and all the parts to solder. And we're just gonna chuck this together and I'll explain the techniques and the tools I use as I go. Uh, but that's by far the best way to, to learn how to do this. So let's just start by opening this up and taking a quick look at what's inside. So we have uh, basically a PCB, the circuit board we want to solder the components to, a D battery holder, some resistors, potentiometer, so a variable resistor, uh, little LEDs, um, microphone I'm guessing for the sound pickup, uh, screws, capacitors, all sorts. So let's chuck all this together. So the first thing you want to do is to place the components. So you can see we have designators, uh, you know, R5, R12, R11, R1 and 2. Uh, so we want to pick the correct components and install them. If we start with uh, R1 here, and we've got the excess legs, basically just poke it through the hole, poke it through there, and bend it over, and then you can push down like that. Uh, so that it goes on the board. Uh, which is how we want it. So you'll have it like that on one side. See there, you crush down and crush down to keep the legs in place. And now it will be you know, held in place so it won't fall. Then on this side, I would typically move one leg up so that we can solder this. So the way I'm going to do this is to take the soldering iron, get it up to temperature, and then just Put a bit on your iron, go on the edge there and feed in there and move away. Now you'll have a nice fillet there and then we'll do the same for the other one. So you just feed in, put your iron on the edge onto there and feed in and remove. And you can see. And now we just take cutters, level the legs up, and cut flush. And that's the finished job. So the other thing you could do is pre-bend the legs like this, and then place them in, and then push them down, and that way it stays there. happens if you put the solder on the iron first instead of feeding it in. So you can see now I've blobbed it on the iron but it's already dry. So look at all the you know the crusty solder. It doesn't look as smooth as the one next to it. It's, it's kind of all dry and wrinkly looking. And that's because the flux has burnt out as soon as you've touched it on the iron. So the flux is the yellow outer shine that you can see around the joint there. And if you flow some more in, then the fresh flux from the uh, solder that you're applying will then reflow and make it look nice and shiny. Um, so that's why you don't just apply solder to the iron and then apply it to the iron to the leg. 
Uh, instead, you're much better feeding the solder in from the iron, uh, you know, keeping it so it's applied to the joint as quick as possible. So another example again once more, uh, you can see it's basically instantly dried up if you don't uh, put the iron on the leg and, and feed in, you'll just end up with a dry joint. So you can repair a dry joint by simply feeding more solder in so that the flux flows through again. Um, but that's a quick example of why we feed in and don't apply solder to the iron first. So all the other components are placed basically the same. Uh, we have capacitors, which doesn't matter which way around these go in, these go in any. These however, have a specific way, so this is the negative side, so you have to put this side in uh, to the negative on the board, uh, where it says negative here. So you've got to have this going into the negative of the capacitor. Uh, if you get that wrong, then obviously uh, it's no good. So you typically put a capacitor in like that. So the LEDs again have a flat on one little edge there um, and also the leg is slightly longer. So when you get the circuit board you can see the flat there. I'm just go with the flat of here. So that will go in like so. Now the transistors have three legs uh, all in line, so they're all in line at the minute, uh, but in here they are separated. So again, the flat, you know, you've got a flat side, so you want the flat part going against the flat line there, and you just take the middle leg, just separate them legs out, um, and then take from the flat side, uh, you take the middle leg and just bend it up slightly. So we have a dog leg. And then now you simply insert it into there. One, two, three. As it goes in, you try and keep it level. Um, and you just push it through. So simply push it through like that. And you'll find that will hold itself. So that isn't going anywhere. So that's that in. Before we put the battery pack on, uh, in order to clean off 
all this residue here. I'm just going to take some IPA fluid and just get a toothbrush or an anti-static brush, squeeze that on, plenty on there, and then just get in there with the brush and The last step is to solder the battery connector on. Okay, so here it is. Uh, so it's all soldered up, it was fairly easy to do. Um, we've just got to put the battery in, and I presume that's will work. I genuinely haven't tested this yet, so let's see. I also am not sure what it'll do. I'm presuming these lights will just react to sound. So if we put the battery in, pretty tight. I can see it trying to do something. That's a really tight fitting battery. Well, it's making contact enough. It's not exactly in, but it's making contact. And <laughs> that's cool. So it reacts to my voice. So obviously the more you talk, the more they light up. And if you go silent, it goes quiet. So, I mean, that's quite a fun little project. It's, you know, people enjoy that. You cover the microphone. It's still sensitive enough to uh, hear when it's covered. So, you, you know, you're still picking up sound. That's how microphones are, they're very sensitive. Uh, they're also sensitive to wind, um, you know, sound pressure, obviously, sound waves. So it'll just light up on, you know, pressure, tapping sound waves as well as blowing. Well, yeah, I think that's quite cool. It's a nice little project. It's something for you to practice uh, your soldering skills. So that's it, really. That's that's how you solder. Um, that's through whole components. They're all the same. Uh, once you've done this many different components, you've really done everything you need to do for through whole components. Uh, so next we'll move on to surface mount components, which are slightly different techniques, but again, just as easy. Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little episode on soldering through whole components. Uh, any comments or suggestions, as always, leave them in the video. Uh, and let me know how you get on with your soldering.